Well, hello, everybody, and greetings. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor Wingate, along with Pastor Mike, we're here tonight uh, trying to get it right by going back to the Bible. This is Thursday. We are halfway past the uh, time of the month of January in 2024, and here we are. Uh, we're grateful to the Lord for another opportunity that he has blessed us with. Uh, Dr. Anderson uh, is with us tonight as well, and he's kind of in the background, and we're praying for him that God will continue to bless him and strengthen him. So uh, we live here in the state of Michigan. We are in our winter months, and even in winter, God is still good, and he's still worthy to be praised mm -hmm. no matter what. So you that are coming in, God bless you. Uh, once again, if there's somebody you can think of right quick that you feel these broadcasts would be a blessing to, you may want to text them or call them right quickly or some kind of way, inform them that we are on, getting it right, going back to the Bible. We're going to have a word of prayer, and then we already have questions in the chat section, and uh, we're going to get busy tonight with the help of God. Gracious God, our Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day and you've allowed us to be a part of and bringing us throughout this day to this point where we have an opportunity to share, Lord, with a live audience. And then even those that may pick this broadcast up later on down the road through social media, we pray that you'll grant unto us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, clarity of thought, speech, and mind. Lord, let the word come back to our remembrance as we share and respond to questions tonight and share with your people and share with believers as well as non-believers. Our prayer for believers is that they would be strengthened and encouraged and enlightened. Our prayer for non-believers that something would be said to help them come to the place of repentance and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior before it's too late. We pray for the bereaved families. We pray God, for those that are going through sicknesses and illnesses, that you would restore health. We thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. We have Pastor Charlie on uh, with us as well. So uh, we have a pretty full slate. So we're going to get busy, brothers. Uh, Pastor Mike, we can go all the way back to the top. Now, we do have a couple questions from last week that we're going to get to as well, some that uh, we were not able to get to. And we had a very good discussion last week, and we'll uh, perhaps um, delve back into that. But as we go all the way up, we have our faithful brother, Earl Smith, uh, a man that loved God and loved the word of God, and that is full of questions as well. Mm -hmm. And thank God uh, for him. As a matter of fact, uh, Brother Earl, make sure you see me Sunday. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. That's the good thing about social media. You can get requests in and things of that nature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brothers. This question says, Jesus chose, Jesus chose and allowed Judas to be with him to the end, knowing he was a thief and taking money. Uh, Ananias and his wife dropped dead when they were dishonest and uh, to and lied to the Holy Spirit. And there's a second part that says, I'm going to pull that up right quick to get to the second part of the question. I'm sorry. Here we go. It says, what can we draw from that? <laughs> what can <laughs> we draw from that? Mm -hmm. Well, two things. Jesus allowed Judas to hang around and Ananias and Sapphira died. died. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Earl is probably looking for a little more. So, uh, Pastor Mike, you want to you want to stab at it? <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think we can. One thing we can see is that, you know, and Jesus used the parable about the wheat and the tear, we see the wheat and the tear comes uh, a bad together. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can certainly see that. Another thing I think we can see is how uh, even though Judas had evil intent, God allowed him to remain there mm -hmm. and God even used Judas's evil intent ultimately to bring about his sovereign purposes. Mm -hmm. and so God is so good that even the evil that people do, he knows how to uh, work together for the good, uh, one for his purpose, and two for those that love God and who are to call it according to his purpose. 
And then the fact that we see Ananias and Sapphire dropping dead means that God don't have to allow <laughs> you to stay. He, he's God and sovereign. And if he wants to uh, execute immediate judgment, he can do that. And if he wants to allow you to abide for a period in order so he can work uh, or accomplish another plan, he can do that also. All right. So we kind of see uh, somewhat of a contrast, Pastor Charlie. He allowed Judas to hang around and Ananias and Zephyr drop dead. So yeah. what sayest thou? Well, uh, I that was good, uh, Pastor Mike. And That's just true. to add on to that is to let us know that no matter who, no matter what, he knows. He knows the heart. He knows what's going on. You can't get nothing by God, no kind of way. And so mm -hmm. that's what I draw from it. And uh, just because Judas was hanging around, Judas couldn't fool Jesus. Mm -hmm. Ananias and Sapphira lied, and it was, the scriptures is clear. They lied to the Holy Ghost. They lied to God. And so nobody is going undetected. Nobody is getting in <laughs> unaware. As wow. such. You know what I'm saying? You will be found out. Damn. That's what I take it from it. Mm -hmm. No matter what. You, 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 if you go, you know what I'm saying, all the way to the white throne judgment, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be found out. Yeah. That's right. You say nobody's getting the way. And that's true. And here's the other thing. Uh, the Bible is clear that God is the judge of all the earth and he does what's right. And God knows when he chooses to administer his judgment to whatever way he decides to do it. He's just in doing it, because if God would have dealt with any of us, according to our iniquity, the Bible said no flesh would be saved. Right. All right. Dr. Anderson, anything you want to say on that? Yeah, yeah, Bishop, I, I, I agree with my pastor brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I was thinking about it, you know, the Bible said these things were written for your learning. So either way you look at it, it didn't work well. <laughs> and, and then one, he got his quick. The other oh, one, he had to keep it. Well, he might didn't know it, but he seemed like you might have to think about it. And I know from some trouble that I knew was coming, that thinking about it almost is just as bad if you would have got it up, up front. So right. way, it don't work out well. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And this is why it's important for all of us to learn and ask God to help us to learn to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And don't be or play the role of hypocrisy. Right. It's not Amen. worth it. It's not worth it. All right. Our next question. Uh, it says, um, is this is a question in regards to cremation. Uh, it says, is cremation biblical uh, for Christians? Should the ashes be buried afterwards? What's going uh, What's going to happen on Christ's return? And I have my loved one's dead body, ashes, in some jewelry box or in, I think there's a second part uh, of that, or, or uh, in my home. Okay. Um, first of all, be, uh, believe it or not, there's not a whole lot that the Bible says in regards to cremation. Matter of fact, um, what we do know by studying the Bible, in particular in the Old Testament, that burning of bodies uh, basically was a pagan thing. Pagans did that. So we do not see the practice of cremation among believers as a rule. We see the practice of burying. Now, with that said, there is no scripture that we could go to in the Old Testament or the New Testament that would say, thou shall not cremate. Right. We know we live in the day, brothers, where cremation almost look like it's trying to become the order of the day. Mm -hmm. But I'll say this. Let's say a person was cremated. Here is the thing. If they are a believer, we just finished saying that God is the judge of all the earth. He knows everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody who is a believer and they die and they're buried or cremated, God in his sovereignty and his preeminence and in his power, he know, as we use the term sometimes, how to gather all the ashes together, how to remake that body and then glorify it. Now, just another quick illustration. You have believers who've been in war. Some of them have been blown up, have been burned. Some people have been in fires and things of that nature. 
If they are a believer, God is the one that will put that body back together and glorify that body. So we will be able to see them and know them in that glorified state and share together uh, as believers. So the practice seems to be burial. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the same time, there's nothing that says thou shalt not cremate. Brothers? Yeah, uh, that was good, Bishop. I was just thinking about the fact that that, that was the uh, customary uh, thing for uh, folks to the body to be actually buried or placed in a tomb or uh, uh, a cave and uh, whatnot. But one thing we do know, no matter where, no one will escape, like you say, the judgment of God. So you can throw your so, uh, uh, the loved ones or people desire to be cremated and their ashes thrown to the wind and out on the sea and all of that. <laughs> you know, all that's going to come back together because everybody has got to see Jesus one way or another. And so, yeah, uh, I think cremation today, if I'm not uh, mistaken, is uh, it's, it's, it's less expensive. Uh, to do nowadays, I, I think uh, y'all can correct me if I'm uh, if I'm wrong. It, it is <laughs> okay. I think that's one of why it's becoming more popular now as an uh, alternative to uh, to to do. But uh, no one can escape the judgment of God. And like you said, you know, folks fall if, if a plane crash and body parts. We don't know where those body parts were. Right. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus and that final resurrection, everybody. You know, those that uh, who uh, will have to face the white throne judgment, the Bible says deceit. Every, everything is going to give up. Today. Is dead. So, yeah, and uh, <laughs> got to stand before him. Yeah. One way or another. Mm -hmm. All right, Pastor yes. Mike, anything you want to say on that? Yeah, I just uh, add this. I certainly agree with everything that's been stated. You know, there's no explicit Bible passage that says uh, thou shalt not cremate, as you stated, Bishop. Uh, I will say this, that burial in some way is a powerful illustration of our faith that one of these days, these bodies shall be raised from the dead. Right. Uh, and so I think that when we when we are uh, have to minister at a, a funeral, you know, it's a wonderful way to talk about the death of Christ and how his body mm. was in the tomb, you know, for three days. But on that third day, he got up. Uh, and so. I do think that, as you stated, Bishop, the biblical uh, norm appeared, especially amongst the believers or Jews, the Israelites, was bur burial. And I think, and even Job made a powerful statement, you know, those skin worms uh, eat my body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, all that are in the grave shall come forth. So, so it is an illustration of our faith. Although, again, I would agree that there's no explicit passage that commands uh, one way or the other. Right. Uh, I thought as you all were talking, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 42, mm -hmm. it hit on what both of you stated. And I'll just read that right quickly. Uh, wow. uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 42 helps us out. Um, and this is for the person that asked the question in our audience as well. It says, uh, so also is the resurrection of uh, the dead. The body is sown in corruption. That means his natural body. When it dies, it is sown in corruption. As, as was brought up, the skin worms literally can eat the flesh and the flesh turns to dust. From dust thou art, dust thou return. Is that it is raised in the incorruption. So this is talking about the resurrection of the body. Mm -hmm. The Lord is going to resurrect the bodies. It says it is sown in dishonor. Talking about naturally speaking, it, it is sown in dishonor. It decays. OK, um, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, all of this um, natural stuff, the skin, you know, like you say, you, you know, it turns into nothing but skeletons. OK, rigor mortis sets in at death. But it says in verse 43, it is sown in dishonor, but it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. Our bodies right now have the capability to die of dying. As a matter of fact, we're dying every day in a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So the emphasis is placed on 
Uh, if a person is a believer, God got you. Again, I think that sometimes we do have to be careful about just because something is cheaper saying I'm going to do it. And I really believe that a person has to deal and should deal with their conscience, conscience as well. If your conscience is ministering to you and, and encouraging you to do the burial, fine. But once again, um, I've done services of, of both where, you know, there was a regular burial and then cremation. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, Bishop, hey. just, just, I'm just thinking as you were going through that. So, so cremation uh, expedites the process. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you really hit on it uh, earlier in my experience. Mm -hmm. Many people do it because it is less expensive. Yeah. And funerals nowadays, I mean, the price is like highway robbery, really. Yes, it is. So, okay, where we at? You know, we can get to, <laughs> we can get stuck right. on the question here. Right. All right. Here's yeah. one that says, um, God bless you, Chris. It says, do you have any advice on reading books like Isaiah or Deuteronomy? Uh, really detailed books that can be hard to follow sometimes. Yes, uh, here is what I encourage you. If you're just starting out reading the Bible, one of the, well, let me say it this way, brothers. One of the things that the enemy loves to do is to make people think and feel that the Bible is hard to understand. Mm -hmm. So sometime even before we read it, there's a defeat that's in our minds. I'm not going to understand this. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to understand it. But I would encourage a person. And again, this is not ironclad because people have to decide uh, what is best for them and then get good sound advice like our brother is asking. It is so important that when you pick up the Bible, I would encourage you to at least start out reading the book of Genesis. You need to read the book of Genesis because that's the beginning that tells us about God and how we got here mm -hmm. and how our world got here. That's important. You know, and again, there's probably a hundred different Bible recommendations of what people are to read. You know, you can read Genesis to Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, by the time you get to Leviticus, you're going to be discouraged. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to fool around and read a book like First Chronicles. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so if you read Genesis, read uh, Exodus and read Deuteronomy and then spend time reading the New Testament, get a good handle on that. So once you do that and make a habit of reading, then when it comes to Isaiah, when it comes to Deuteronomy, you think Isaiah may be difficult. Isaiah is really not that difficult. What's difficult is First Chronicle, <laughs> first part of Second Chronicle, the Book of Leviticus. You know that's what's going. You know that's what can throw you. But accept the challenge. Read Genesis, and, and that's just an advice. My brothers here, they may have a different perspective, which is fine, mm -hmm. you know, and then get in the New Testament, read the Gospels, and read the letters of Paul. Once you do that and get familiar with that, you'll be better prepared to go back to the Old Testament and accept the challenge. Brothers? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's good. Right. Go ahead, Pastor Mike. No, I was going to say uh, one, and, and I enjoyed everything you stated, Bishop. Um, I also found uh, something helpful with understanding some of those books, especially with, when we get into the prophets, is, uh, you know, reading a chronological Bible, because those prophets are speaking to things that went on in the book of Chronicles, in the book of Kings. Mm -hmm. And and so what happens in the chronological mm -hmm. Bible, they'll insert where the prophet comes in and, and it'll go right back to the context in which the prophet may be speaking in, may directing you back to the book of Kings or Chronicles or things like that. So that's a helpful way to understand it. And, 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 and as you stated, Bishop, uh, some of the books can seem daunting, but yeah. but if you just, just start reading them, you'll find that they're not as difficult as one might think and you'll start right. comprehending what's going on so yeah and i and i tell you to <laughs> to your point pastor mike mm -hmm. early on i would hear people say that 
Like, yeah, you read that. So I wouldn't read it because <laughs> they already planted a seed in my mind. Right. And it's going to be difficult. Right. But like you said, when you accept the challenge and read mm -hmm. it, and I'm going to tell you something that helped me when I probably the first time I ever read the Bible through is I read the Bible through by playing the cassette tape. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was playing the tape and I was reading along and that helped me. Right. Mm -hmm. It really helped me. So that's another technique of advice. Mm -hmm. So, and I promise you, Chris, all of us have been there. <laughs> there ain't now one of us right. that have not struggled. Mm -hmm. But when you accept it and the Bible becomes a very enjoyable book. And the other thing, and Pastor Anderson, uh, Elder Anderson brings us up from time to time, and we all do in a sense, but is getting around people so we can talk about what we read. That's good. And challenge right. one and encourage one another. So that's good too. Okay. Right. I just was going to add this to Bishop. And sometime, uh, see, I think it was it may have been more difficult for us uh because we, we had that King James version. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so find a find a friendly read. If it's a if it's an easier read, find that read it. And just yeah, uh, right. It's gonna take it's gonna take some work. It's going to take some time and it's going to take uh, some effort. But it is so true that uh, if you divorce uh, the book of Genesis, in particular, the first three chapters, yeah, you won't, you, you, you'll really be lost in understanding what the Bible is trying to uh, say to us today. So, yeah, take everything we said and consider it all. And the Lord give thee understanding. <laughs> <as you go. laughs> okay, thank you, Chris. Here's a question that says, when witnessing, uh, I'm hesitant to say the Bible says right off the bat and usually talk about my testimony because someone, someone, some people, they don't believe in the Bible. Should we witness from a faith base or should we immediately talk about the Bible? Well, we definitely want to witness from a faith base, and our testimony is part of the faith base. And it is true that some people that don't understand the Bible. So what we want to try to do initially is to try to get their attention so we can talk about God, mm -hmm. and talk about his son, Jesus Christ. And that can come through our personal testimony. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, and see, this is why discipleship is important. And we're very lacking in discipleship. Mm -hmm. Discipleship says not only do we introduce a person to Christ, but once we do that, then we follow through. So, mm -hmm. yes, I think one great way to witness is to simply share with people about your own testimony. And that's mm -hmm. automatically going to go to the Bible some kind of way, whether they realize it or not. Because mm -hmm. you're going to be talking about, you know, what the Lord did, how he changed your life, salvation, what he brought you from how good God is and right. thank God for Jesus. So it's going to the Bible, right? <laughs> Amen. you know, but sure. Share your testimony, brothers. Definitely. Uh, you know, our testimonies are, are helpful. Now what, what we don't want to solely depend on our testimonies mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, our testimonies can't save anyone. Uh, as a matter of fact, other quote unquote faiths, uh, they they try to support their beliefs by their testimonies, uh, yeah. but the but testimonies are helpful. Mm -hmm. But then our testimony should then ultimately point them right back to the Word of God, mm -hmm. you know. Because at the end of the day, uh, when you know the truth, the truth makes you free, and the truth is found right in the Scripture. So I certainly think your testimonies can be a powerful tool, uh, but never to the exclusion of the Scriptures. All right. Right. The scriptures are inexcusable. And I've learned, too, and when talking to people, instead of using the term Bible, I'll, I'll use the term scriptures more often than not, because people want to get hung up, you know, on that term Bible, you know, but they can relate sometimes to scriptures. And the way the gospel was presented, of course, Israel was somewhat familiar through Judaism and the, and with the Old Testament. And so it's inescapable to have a testimony and not bring in the word of God or the scriptures. So, Amen. yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it goes hand in hand. And one thing you said, Bishop, and I think it's so true, discipleship. I don't try to get all my points across in the first conversation. If I can make a friend, if I know we gonna talk again, 
See, mm -hmm. making a disciple, a, a disciple that takes time. That's not something that may be done in one little quick setting. Right. But even if you don't see that person again, you need to, yes, say something about the scriptures because the scriptures can reach where we can't reach. You know what I'm saying? And so, yes, your testimony is good. But at the end of the day, you know, I even said something just recently and, I, and I, I've been saying it for a while, you know, to the natural ear, you know, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, that may sound kind of foreign, like a weird to the to, to the first hearing of it. So we need to elaborate on that. We can't do all that in one setting. So it's right. time to mm -hmm. make that disciple. Yeah. Follow through, Doctor Anderson. Yeah, actually, my, both both my my brothers, they I could have stayed silent because they. The <laughs> they mm -hmm. But I do agree, and and even talking okay, your mic, Elder. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So when I when I go out and and witnessing, you have to be careful with testimony because testimony makes you feel good, but 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 the testimony it may not be the scripture, it may be according to scripture, so you can get caught up in the testimony. And, and you left them away from the from what the Bible was actually saying. So I will ask sometimes, you know, again, and everybody is different. That's why it's deal with much prayer. You understand what that, how that conversation is going. Do you uh, do you believe the Bible? I don't just come up to them. Do you believe the Bible? But as uh, Pastor Charlie was saying, I try to get that friendly part in there first. I said, what that call? <laughs> and each case is different. That's why you pray, pray and you got to hear what they're saying. And it, as um, both the brothers have said, is you only got a little amount of time unless it's somebody that you know you're going to be talking to again. So you want to make sure that you can get one point that you got to understand with that you can get that across. And the prayer is that somebody will come along and water that. So don't get disturbed by it because each case, from what I find, is always seems like it's always different. So mm -hmm. you got to be there and you hear, hear what the scripture is saying. Hear what they're saying and get that one, one point and don't allow them to jump you all over the place. Get that one point where you got their ear and try to work that to the best as you can with them. But again, like I say, I I, I think we have to be careful and I, and I don't see nobody here doing it. And I think that's actually that's why I think I'm here. We do it with much prayer. There is no script to say do it this way. Do it that way. Because everybody is different. However you however you're doing it, make sure you do it Bible. <laughs> he that wins souls must be wise. Right. Man. He that wins souls. Mm -hmm. All right. It says there's a second question. It says, I was asked a question yesterday, uh, stating that uh if the Bible elaborated on certain stores, I'm sorry. Probably say stories. stories. It's probably certain stories. stories more. Uh, more or gave much information on certain things, then it would make more sense to them. I think, okay, I think I got it. Okay, I think the answer I gave them was valid, but can you all give your um, answers? So if, if I'm understanding the question correctly, brothers, it says that there are, when they were talking, that there are those that may say, if the Bible elaborated on certain things more, then maybe I can accept it. If it doesn't, then maybe there's a gray area. Now, that's my interpretation. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you all's interpretation is, but I'll let you all stab at it first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, what I find <clears throat> is that sometimes, and, and this is it's unfortunate, but for some people, it'll never be enough. Right. Uh, I think what we have in the scripture, uh, God is more wise than all of us. <laughs> and, and he knew just what we needed, uh, just how much work, because remember, it is God's intention that we get saved and he wouldn't short us on the information in order to bring us ultimately to salvation. And so I would encourage that person and say, listen, everything, there's enough in this book. Now, did God give us everything? No, one, we couldn't handle it. But there's enough in the Bible, in the scriptures uh, to give us uh, enough information about the God we serve to save us and to deliver us. Anything God didn't share with us, uh, we don't need <laughs> it for salvation. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, and again, I would just encourage that person. I would ask for examples. You know what I mean? Well, what story do you need more elaboration on? 
you know, because sometimes it's not that God didn't give enough is that they can't comprehend it. You know, there's some story. God split the Red Sea. Well, how did he do that? He's God. (laughs) Right. There's no mutton. There's not a whole lot more to it. that He has all power. So that's Mm -hmm. just what I would encourage the person. Okay. Yeah. And it could very well be one of those situations where that the individual may not be sincere. Mm-hmm. In, in pursuing what the Bible has to say. Like I say, we have enough in there to understand uh, salvation and a relationship with Jesus Christ, which is the most important thing. Uh, as we go on uh, after you know, initial salvation, we go on to know the Lord. <clears throat> and then the Bible says, I believe it's Ephesians chapter two says, it's going to take the eternal ages to come mm-hmm. to, uh, he's going to be showing us and, 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 and unveiling to us about his grace. So we on this side, we're not going to know everything. And like you said, we have enough. Just think if we didn't have the Bible now. Yeah, that would. Yeah, we would be. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of gray there. Right. But how we can be in relationship with this Jesus who died for our sins, was buried and resurrected. It's right there. Black, white and red. Mm. Okay, black, yeah. white and red. All right. <laughs> OK, we got a lot of questions up here. And you know, and you know Bishop. Another thing that I was thinking about, I think back to the first part of his question, he say, I think he talked about the, uh, when I say the Bible says, one thing that I try to do is not to get into the Bible. I try to, if I can, because now some people may have a problem with reading, so then you ain't got no choice. But most of the time, I try to get them to read it because they they might re- remember more what they what, if they read it. If they read it. Hmm. They hmm. it. And then the other thing, you know, because... I'm a member of Power, Hope, and Grace. Well, you know, I ain't, can't give you all that right now, but, you know, we have class at on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock. You know, right. so I come at, and, and I might say something to the, you know, how many, and I'm still learning because you can't just sit in a one setting. And so that kind of breaks the ice, like, you know, letting them know, you know, did you want no, 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 no IQ of whatnot? <laughs> you had to study and continue to have to study and these types mm-hmm. of things. So, that's another good way to, 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 to bring them in. Not that I'm cutting you off, but it, you know, but but if you really want to know these things, there is classes going on that hey, yes, I right. love to, mm-hmm. to address these issues. Right. And um, you know, the uh, finally on this point, I would say this. That's why it's so important for each of us, and I'm speaking of all believers, mm-hmm. to make sure we strive to be sharpened, that yeah. we learn. So when a person make a statement like that, because there's a couple of things that Jesus said, just like, you know, Jesus talked about heaven. But did you not know Jesus himself didn't say a whole lot about heaven? But when he talked about it, man, that's a serious subject. Then he talked about hell. (laughs) He said quite a bit about that. Mm -hmm. And so we have to sharpen ourselves that when a person make a statement like that. You know, and that gets into some other areas, too. People talk about what they can't do, what they can do. And the Bible doesn't say this. The Bible doesn't say that. But the Bible says a whole lot that yeah. we may not realize, as you all have indicated. All right. I, we hope that helped you. Uh, if not, you know what to do. You can always chime back in and uh, ask a question or add on to it. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a question that says there are so many people that say they are prophets now out there. There are so many people that have a word for everyone. Should we only read the word instead of allowing someone to speak over us? Oh, boy, this question is getting ready to get Mike and Charlie and (laughs) Anderson. Anderson is off the screen, but that's going to get him (laughs) stirred up. (laughs) Whichever one of you I want to take a stab at it first, go right ahead. I'm going to let y'all stir the pot. (laughs) Go go ahead, Pastor Mike. I'm going to be quiet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I got a word. No, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, people are divorcing God's revelation from God's revelation. In other words, they're they're seeking to go outside of what God has plainly revealed to us in Scripture and to try to come up with something else. We uh, here's what I'll say. The word of God is the supreme authority. Mm -hmm. Right. If if someone shares something with me. 
if I can't tie it to the word of God, then I am under no obligation to receive it. I don't care if they have prophet, apostle, or whatever, but beside their name, if you share something with me, I need to be able to tie it to scripture. Can God, you know, uh, impress upon someone's heart to share an encouraging word with somebody? Sure. You know, I'm not opposed to that, but I think uh, at least from the tenor of the question, it seems like they're referring to some of these folks that that's hearing from God word for word. And, and, <laughs> and it's, I just don't see that practice in scripture, uh, certainly. Uh, and even in cases where it may seem to be the uh, what was going on, it certainly wasn't the norm. So these people that's getting these everyday words and always got a word. Listen, if you're not attaching a book, chapter, verse to it again, we are under no obligation to receive. Yeah, all right. Charlie going to be quiet, so I'm going to let Anderson speak, and then I'll close out. <laughs> all, all I'm going to say, and since I don't want to be called in my pastor's office on Sunday, see me on the side. I got a new book coming out, and I'll tell you about it, and we'll address that then. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Lord, to help. Oh, my goodness. Listen, um, to this question, and and we know, you know, we're we're kind of you know somewhat uh, humorous, uh, but this is a very serious issue and a serious problem. Right. Okay, I want to read first Saint John chapter eight verse thirty one, and I want to definitely encourage you, please, uh, write down this scripture and read it when you all have time. But we'll read it Saint John eight mm -hmm. verse thirty one, and then we'll go to Second Timothy. Uh, verse 31 of St. John 8 says this. Then Jesus said to those Jews, mm -hmm. okay, uh, who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free. And just look at a couple of things. Jesus said, abide in me. That's talking about relationships, spiritual relationships, salvation, being reconciled back to God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that abiding also denotes that I love the Lord. I'm learning his commandments and I want to keep those commandments. That's obedience to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So it's important to read the Bible so we can know what the scriptures say. And then he said, if you do this, you are my disciples indeed in your conduct, behavior, how you live. That is where the proof is. And then he said, when you come to this point of relationship, abiding in his word, you will know. That's the process of learning. You're going to know. And once you know what truth is, he said, that is what's going to make you free. Yeah. There is nothing in this passage that would suggest that you have to have a word from somebody you understand what i'm saying and what we are what we're referring to by saying that is this word of somebody saying the lord told me to tell you just like i heard a guy today was giving prophecies for 2024 and he said he had about 80 to 100 different things that the lord told him the ones that i listened to i cannot say the lord told him anything mm. it was just that horrible now, let's go over to this the famous passage in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Because the question brings up a very interesting point. Paul says this, I charge you. He places a demand by giving a command to his son in the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I do this before the Lord and before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Timothy, preach the word. What word? The scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's what you preach. All of this other stuff. We don't need. Now, I agree with Pastor Mike that. <laughs> God can impress upon. I mean, hey, and all of us have probably have experienced that with somebody who's just on our mind and we called them and encouraged them. But whatever we encourage them is centered around the scriptures. Amen. It's not just this thing of just speaking into right. the atmosphere, speaking into a person's life. You don't see this stuff in the Bible. No, sir. Paul tells Timothy to preach the word. I'm going to take what Paul says over any 
so-called modern day prophets and most of these people probably all of them are not prophets anyway mm -hmm. okay and i know that's pretty terse but these are kind of things that stir us up so we have to read the bible listen to the scriptures surround ourselves with people who are striving to live the scriptures that's why if you can you should pick up the bible on a daily basis if you can definitely don't let days pass by where you're not reading the scriptures and or listening to sound somewhere amen i so hope that helped you okay much more we could say that that's loaded mm. uh, here's a question that says uh considering saint john 16 33 proverbs 16 9 and psalms 34 19 can a person command their day knowing that God uses the things in our lives and allows them in uh, shape, allow them to shape and mold us and to transform uh, us into the image of Christ? Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting question. And thank you for the question uh, here. And we know that St. John 16 and 33 talks about the peace that the Lord gives. It says this, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Let's put up Proverbs 16 to 9. Yeah. Proverbs 16 to 9 says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his step. Now, I just want to say this there. This is a contrast here. This is a contrast. This is not a parallel. And right. I'll explain what I mean. This is a contrast. Okay. And we had one other uh, scripture, Psalms 34, 19. And we know that that's going to be talking about peace. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Now, with these scriptures in mind, the question says, can a person command their day? Hmm. Brothers, yeah, I'm a little uh, perplexed uh, with, with, with actually what they mean by command there. Okay, but all three of those scriptures, if you want to have a good day, it looked like you need the Lord to help you to have a good day. That's really <laughs> so. It's leaning on the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And allowing him to work through you in order for you to have a good day. I mean, all of this uh, commanding, decreeing, declaring, creating. We want to be very, very careful there. That's not what the Bible teaches and uh, proposes. Just like you brought out, you know, that's a contrast there, you know, between what a person does and what the Lord is doing, can do through a person and through their day if we would acknowledge him he will direct our path that's what the bible tells me so okay yeah what we have to okay hold. all right yeah. Dr. Mike? yeah i would definitely say no you cannot <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and pastor charlie uh alluded to this this creating this idea that you can create your own reality that you can you know, demand or decree blessings, or I decree today that there'll be no this or no that. You can decree all you want, <laughs> right? Uh, what we have to understand, and 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 the scripture uh, point to this: whatever happens today, God is with me, right? Yeah. And whatever happens, God can work it for my good. Uh, the Lord is on our side, and and all of us gonna experience some some good days and some days that we may experience some things that are not so good. Right. But our consolation is that knowing that we have a God on our side and we can overcome through and by His power. That's the comfort of the believer, right? If you're gonna decree anything, decree those scriptures and trust in God's word. All right, Doctor Anderson. Pastor Mike, can you, can you pull up Job 38, 12? And I was trying to think of it, and I was hoping you talk a little bit longer. I, I'm trying to think of one thing. It, it made me wonder. And it said we're on a time schedule. <laughs> it, it came to town. Uh, 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 Pastor Moss and I, we had did a, a, a class on this and, what, and whatnot. And this woman comes to town. She got a lot of books. And a lot. And this is the, one of the verses that she used. Uh, can you read that for me, Pastor? Because my boy. Sure. 
Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place that it may take hold of the ends of the earth? Mm -hmm. So when you read that in context, God wasn't telling Job to command his day. He was right. talking to him in, in relation to what was going on with, with, with Job, who was in control and whatnot. It's God that's in control. <laughs> but people take that and use it and with a little twist on it because I almost said a name. And with a little twist on and they fill up, well, they ain't called Kobo no more, but they fill up the stadium with folks and the women and maybe some brothers too. But <laughs> don't mm. let me get in trouble. But they fill up the stadium going down there so they can learn about commanding their day. But as uh, the pastors have already cleared out, we don't get that nowhere in scripture. And that scripture is used out of context when they use that. Right. Um, I'll say this, and we know that when these terms are used, now there's some people that, again, sometime a term have to be defined. Mm -hmm. As Pastor Charlie brought up, if mm -hmm. a person says, can I command my day? Well, what do you mean? Right. Now, we know among certain circles that they use this language. And that's why our various responses are like they are. Uh, mm -hmm. Among word of faith, some of you charismatic some extreme and ultra grace people, they use these terms like commanding your day. Mm -hmm. Listen, James said it like this. <laughs> you and I can plan all day. We can right. say this, that, and the other. <laughs> he said what we ought to say is if it's the Lord's will. Yeah. Now, Pastor Charlie brought up something, and both uh, everybody did actually, <clears throat> that when it comes to these scriptures, what we do is we lean on the word of God and ask God, Lord, however this is to apply to me, then work it in me by your Holy Spirit and give me understanding. But mm -hmm. no, we don't command our day. But what we do, for instance, we get up in the morning, we pray, we ask God to direct. And that's what Proverbs is referring to. Mm -hmm. In our hearts, we can come up with all kinds of plans. We can say, I'm going to do this, that, and the other at two o'clock. I'm going to do this at four o'clock. James said, that's fine, plan. But don't right. plan without God, number one. Number two, say, if it's the Lord's will. Okay, mm -hmm. so that word of faith jargon, we have to be careful if that is what the person is uh, referring to about commanding our day. Other than that, we stand on the word of God. And when Jesus said that peace I leave with you, notice he brought up something else. He said that peace I leave with you, I'm leaving it in the midst of tribulation. Mm -hmm. so tribulation is going to come, but I'm going to give you peace. And what is that peace? That peace is understanding who we are in God because of God and what he did for us through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So he got us, as Paul said, as the Lord told Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, my grace is sufficient. Now, uh, this is a very good question, a very interesting question. It really can get us into quite a bit of dialogue because just like the question was asked about the prophet speaking in the people live, people are telling people, command your day, get up, declare, and decree. No, all we do is stand on the word. Right. <laughs> Allow the right. word to minister to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pastor Mike, were you trying to say something else on that? No, sir. No, oh, sir. Okay. So I hope that helps you. This is these are some loaded questions. The church I came up uh, in, there was always an evangelist or prophet. Now I'm trying to unlearn <laughs> that we don't need the prophet to speak a word. I wanted to know how God speak to us through the word. Whether you realize it or not, and uh, this is a good question. The reason I say it's a good question is because some people have missed God by not knowing that God was speaking to them through the word. Mm -hmm. So if the question centers around, how does God speak through his word? Again, we have a Bible and we are to treasure this book. And we must understand, first of all, that this is God's word to us. So it's about learning the scriptures and growing in the knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. Hear me, hear me, audience. There's nothing in the Bible that ever said that you have to have a prophet or an evangelist come to you 
and say to you, I got a word from the Lord. The job of the evangelist is to carry the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is uh, news about Jesus Christ and salvation. God so loving the world. The prophet slash the preacher is to preach the Bible. <clears throat> this is how God speaks. And it is so true that many people have been so programmed until you could have a decent praise and worship devotion service. You may even have a halfway decent message, but some people think you haven't had church until after all of that is done, mm. and that person's going to start calling you out. You don't see that in the Bible. Mm. There is no precedent in scripture for that. So what happens, people get so caught up in that. It's just like the churches that are ultra charismatic and emotional. They feel like you haven't had church until you jumped, shouted, spoke in tongue, ran across the pulpit, ran around the church, fell out. A lot of this stuff, hear me, is nonsense. It's not biblical. Mm -hmm. We have to get, let me tell you something. If war break out or tribulation come, you ain't going to shout your way through tribulation. You're going to need the Bible. Mm -hmm. We are going to need the scriptures. Yes. You can't just be shaking. And tell, what are you doing? I'm shaking my way through this trouble. Mm -hmm. No. This is why so many people that are caught up in all the emotionalism be some of the same people that commit egregious sins and we just, the church world be shot. The reason is we're going to make it if we stand on the word of God. Right. And then come, you know, surround ourselves with saints that we can talk to about the Bible. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I again, y'all see these courses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor Mike. Yeah, no, Bishop, that was uh, that was that was real good. Um, I, uh, you know, the only thing I would continue, you know, just to add on to what you said is, you know, keep the word of God as you stated, the authority, the Bible. This is what we need. Uh, you know, we have to get away. I was just watching something today, uh, somebody had came on live on Facebook. And kind of similar to what Pastor Charlie said, they were impressed upon their heart to share the word for the year, you know, <laughs> as though God is, you know, is operating on our clock. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'm going to do for him in 24. This is what a, God is just faithful. And he doesn't, you know, in our humanness, sometimes we those things excite us. But we don't have to get caught up in any of that because Genesis through Revelation is just as true in 2024 as it was in 2023 and all we have to do is remain faithful to the word so this is why paul and again this is scripture this is why paul tells timothy i'm charging you this passage of scripture is so vital and so important yeah. because it is much needed today right mm -hmm. i charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, preach the word. That's why I tell people, I don't get caught up in that other stuff because the demand is on what? Preaching the word, mm -hmm. not the other shenanigans. Mm -hmm. That's what he said in verse two, preach the word. Now notice what else he said, be ready in season and out of season. You got to keep doing it. Right. No matter what is happening, no matter what is going on, keep doing it until somebody is convinced. And those who go astray, you have to be, you have to re, re, rebuke them. And to show us how sometimes the church, the so-called church is so weak that if you rebuke them with the word, people quit God. Yes, Lord. <laughs> All of us have needed rebuking. Yes. That's part of preaching. And the scriptures will rebuke you. Yes, indeed. It'll let you know it's the it's the James said it's the mirror of the law. You look into it and you see that you got off course. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. word ministers to you, man, cut you up, man. You know, make you feel better. You say, I got to do better. Mm -hmm. All of this other stuff, people have been bamboozled. And I'm gonna tell you all something. That is why the church, the so-called church, have become so weak. Is because we've gotten away from the word. Mm -hmm. Remember, John 8, you shall know the truth. Right. That is going to make you free. All of the emotionalism, the jumping, the shouting, the screaming, the running, the loud music, 
none of that stuff is going to make us spiritually strong. No. It can, you know, the excitement, we can be excited. But this is why somebody can get up, brothers, after all of that. And like you were saying, the fellas get them talking about 2024. And I knew where they were going. Then he turned around and said, and I want everybody to give $224 or $2,024. You giving a word for the Lord. Now you're going to tell the people, everybody that believe it, send an offer. <laughs> That's foolishness. Yes. <laughs> we have to stop this stuff. <laughs> Anderson's back on the screen. <laughs> now, Bishop, you made me think about it. New party getting me. Well, I don't know who this for, but somebody, why well, you see stuff like that in the scripture? You don't know who it's for. You don't see it. <laughs> you don't see it. Right. I just mm -hmm. want to say, Bishop, that Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. Sister Clarice, you're on the right track. You're trying to unlearn some stuff. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all we all had to do it. And, I was and we were there too. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. had to unlearn some things. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and 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 Bishop, I was waiting for you to finish up verse number two that said exhort, and then and then it says with all long suffering yeah. <laughs> and teaching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, and there's two things there. The preacher have to be long suffering, which means he have to be consistent in teaching the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now, because if the preacher doesn't be careful, he can be lured exactly because mm -hmm. of what it looked like is happening on the other side. Yeah. But the preacher cannot allow himself to be lured. He got to stay true to the book. Mm -hmm. And then right. the person who's being preached to. They have to be willing to accept it. Okay. Yeah. Listen, let most of this emotionalism, let it go. Mm -hmm. If I get up and I start calling the line on Sunday, and I've had people tell me that. I've actually had people that said, well, y'all don't prophesy around here. I said, I just got through prophesying for 40 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Taking you through the scriptures. Hello. I'm serious. I have had people say that. <laughs> On more than one occasion, I'm like, we don't do that here, right? <laughs> All right, <laughs> yeah. Marvin had to laugh on that one. <laughs> Here's a question that says, Uh, for Pastor Mike, what chronological study Bible would you suggest? See, Pastor Mike making y'all spend money. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, a good chronological Bible can be helpful. I have a one or two myself but go ahead fast mm -hmm. uh yeah you know they're they're uh most of the time uh you can buy a chronological bible doesn't have a lot of commentary it's simply the bible in chronological order i know there's a new king james version chronological bible out there uh, amongst other versions so uh, it's not that i had one specific one in mind there's even though if you don't want to spend money you can google the bible in chronological order and it'll simply just give you the chapters and right. you can just take your current Bible and read them as they go. OK, Pastor Charlie. Yeah, got yeah one Pastor here. Charlie has one up there, David. Uh -huh. um, chronological Bible. And in conjunction with that, the Pastor Mike, you know, we've dealt with that. These things, even in Sunday school, as Elder Anderson brought up, uh, yeah. Christian education and Bible class. Yes, sir. Well, we've showed the chronological order of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and you can get one pretty relatively in in inexpensive, the ones that don't have commentary. Yeah. So it's good to have. It's just, you know, something good to have in your library. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, where we at, brothers? Here we go. All right. Roderick says, uh, it's forgiveness conditional, meaning that the finder uh, must ask for forgiveness before we are uh, obligated to forgive. And this is an interesting question and it have come up on various occasions. Um, it is true that I cannot personally be a recipient of your forgiveness if I don't come to you. Now, at the same time, you have to live in a place where or learn to live in a place where you're willing to forgive and let it go. It is, um, you know, the problem now is me. I'm not a recipient of it because you can't show that love to me if I don't come. But we are to live our spiritual disposition 
should always be that we're ready to forgive others just as the Lord has forgiven us. And just uh, the Apostle Paul brings that out in Ephesians chapter four. Uh, and uh, Jesus, of course, he talks about it in the Sermon on the Mount, where some would say, well, that doesn't refer to the church, but that's a whole nother discussion for another time. Mm -hmm. But he says, if you don't forgive, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. And there's an old saying, finally, that says that at the end of the day, that I'm not necessarily responsible for what you do to me, but I am responsible for what I do to you. So as Christians, we want to live in a place where we're ready to release that forgiveness and mm -hmm. let things go. But the individual is doing themselves a disservice not to receive what I have for them. Yeah. Right. Very. Yeah, that was that was good, Bishop. I was thinking about, too, you know, Stephen being stoned. I was thinking about, you know, Jesus on the cross, you know. Mm -hmm. and so we, we see, you know, an example of forgiving without people even asking <laughs> that they've done anything wrong. Absolutely. And in that model prayer, you know, Jesus alludes to that as well, that we have to forgive. So always be willing and ready to forgive, you know, be simply because God has forgiven us. And so I think if we look at what God has done for us, we would be more readily to do it for others. And, and uh, but, you know, seeking reconciliation and all that, that's another part of it as well, too. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, just yeah. Sometimes it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be therapeutic, so to speak, for you to just right. forgive folk. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and just and just to add on to what has already been stated, we have to be careful, and it's kind of already been alluded to, but we can we can potentially be holding a grudge <laughs> and feeling justified in it because they haven't come. You know yeah, what I true, mean? True, true that. So we have to be really careful with that because our hearts, you know, we want to make sure that no root of bitterness spring up in us, you know, and have that willingness to receive, to forgive. Because Pastor Charlie alluded to the model prayer, you know, our head, we want our heavenly father to forgive us. Right. And God knows uh, we never want to be in a place where that's uh, broken off because we always want to be a uh, recipients of his mercy on our behalf as well. So. Then we got all of them questions that was in the chat. <laughs> Look at that. Yes, sir. Yo, Danison, you see what time it is? <laughs> we, we did an excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, see one, I see one he missed, Bishop. You oh, see I missed one? Yeah, here you go. Which one did I miss, Doc? <laughs> Let me go back. It was the one where the, I think it's right below, uh, Pastor Mike, right below, uh, come on, uh, the word just what uh at 743, I think it is. 743. Mm -hmm. Now Kakoa boy, they, they came in right at 803. Now you know <laughs> you normally ask your questions a little early. Uh, bitch, right. we won't, we won't, I we don't deal with it. Uh, but I do see maybe two, two seven, more, more, uh, I, can, I can gather them and save them for next week if you want. No, I, I know we're gonna go ahead and uh, answer that, but let's get uh okay. Demary and, and say the word of God speaks that they can overcome by the word of the testimony though other test uh, i'm saying through other testimony people can learn to trust god and believe for what they need uh, if they see the other person yeah There's that's a second part to that mm -hmm. or is yeah. that oh is it uh let, oh, okay here it is if they see the other person uh what they see through the testimony the person received uh, yeah, I I, there's a third, third part, but anyway, I think I got the gist of what's being uh, okay. stated here. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it is true, but when they overcome by the power of their testimony, they're not declaring and decreeing things. The power of their testimony is through the blood of the Lamb and Amen. what Christ has done for them. So, if that is connected with the question I was asked about commanding our day. I'm not exactly sure, but that would be my response at this time. Is there something else you all see? Or that could have been connected to uh, DeMarcus's question. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I thought about that it. too when I first started reading it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you hit it though. Okay, yep. and if we didn't uh, answer it uh, clear enough, always feel free to 
uh, kind of re-ask it. But here's our final one for today. It says, what happened if you uh, haven't uh, forgave someone and they're deceased now? Well, here's the thing. God is a good God and a merciful God, and he's mm -hmm. a God of grace. Here is what, and I'm not in any way trying to be funny. I'm very serious in what I'm getting ready to say. Here is what you don't do. Do not go to their grave and call yourself talking to them. Right. And asking them. And I said, because people do that. Mm -hmm. And in the Old Testament, that, that could be very close to necromancy or some type of other, you know, pagan practice. Don't do that. Release it and understand this. According to uh, 1 John chapter 1, that God is a faithful God. If we go to him and ask him for forgiveness because mm -hmm. we didn't do what we should have done. And it, it happens. Mm -hmm. I know of cases where it happened. And people were angry. I didn't get a chance to apologize. I didn't get a chance. There's nothing you can do but mm -hmm. trust the faithful God who is just and willing to forgive you when you acknowledge it. You acknowledge that to God. And he's faithful to forgive you. Let it go and move on. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. So God bless you. All right. Well, Dwayne, God bless you. We love you, man. Now, you the one that's still calling Anderson Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to encourage all of us, the members of Power, Open Grace, Listen, we'll be gathering Sunday at 11.15 a.m. We encourage everybody that can to come out to the sanctuary and enjoy and, and, and join us for a time of praise, a time of prayer, and a time of worship, preaching, okay? And that's 6495 West Warren, uh, right there in the city of Detroit. And you can uh, also, Pastor Mike and Walking on Water Ministry, uh, they will be gathering Sunday at 12.15. That's 15115 Farmington Road in Livonia, Michigan. So we have Power, Hope, and Grace, and we have Walking on Water Bible Church. Um, listen, we encourage you to come out to church. I really, those that can, let's get out of this thing of staying home. Right. Get out. You know, the, 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 the fresh air, or however fresh it is, can do you good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can Come out to the house of God. Let us keep our dear sister Stephanie Derrickson in our prayer and the loss mm -hmm. of her brother, who they'll be funeralizing on next Friday, a week from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They'll be gathering on Friday and Saturday. So we have all of that information available uh, for those that want to know it, and we'll be reannouncing that Sunday. And with that said, thank you, Pastor Mike, Pastor Charlie, Oda Anderson. Appreciate your help and support. And uh, it's going to be all right because we're going to trust God and we're going to follow his lead and allow him to be who he is. He's going to be who he is anyway, whether mm -hmm. we allow him or not. But I want him to be who he is working in my life. So you all have a good night. And until next time, we'll say, let's get it right. Go back to the Bible.